backs, 18 starters are back, seven on offense, seven on defense, four special teams as well. Last year, another terrific season for the Cats and their head coach, Casey Keeler, 12 and two overall, eight and one in the Southland Conference. Second place finish, season opener coming up September 8th. They will open against Prairie View A&M and then the Southland opener, September 22nd, at Nichols, Sam Houston Tate also owns the longest active home winning streak in FCS at 20 games. All right, let's talk more for the Bearcats now. And we are joined, pleasure to be joined on stage by their head coach, Casey Keeler, fifth season on the job, 25th year head coach. It's no, it couldn't be that many. You sure? Is it? 25. I don't know. That's what I read, I think. It is, is that, 25. Yeah, I was going to say, I think it's pretty accurate. I got accurate. my first head job when I was 13. Wow, okay, that's how it works then. It's flown by. You've, you've been uh, very successful, great career, uh, and obviously things are going very well at Sam Houston State. Coming off a terrific season that you guys had, 12-2 uh, and two finish, deep in the playoffs. Talk about how you kind of carry it over from that great in the spring and out into the fall. Well, you know, probably no team in the country, maybe at any level, has lost as many great players as we have. You know, we lose uh, two-time national player of the year at quarterback Jeremiah Briscoe. We lose the second leading rusher in the history uh, of Sam Houston State, um, Jared Avery, um, or McCord Avery. Um, we lose a second round draft choice in PJ Hall, um, best receiver, you know, numbers wise in the history of Southland Conference, uh, Yedidiah Lewis. So the, the list goes on and on of all the, you know, just great, great players we lost. But at the same time, we have a, a good hunk of the nucleus back. And I think we're going to be a little bit different. I think we're going to be a little bit more of a physical team on, on offense, uh, a little bit, um, have probably a little bit better ability to run the football at you, uh, which is something we've wanted to do. But I think we have the offensive line this year to do that. And I think defensively, um, I feel really good about where we are at linebacker. And I think we're going to be more physical in the defensive line. So, you know, I think we've, we've made some changes, I think, in a positive way. I think we're going to just look a little bit different, but I think definitely you'll notice we're a little bit more physical on both sides of the ball. How do you guys carry over from that experience going off all the way to the semifinal round and the guys returning from that kind of experience, I guess the, the hunger to take it another level? Yeah, you know, 46 wins in, in four years. You know, Alabama, North Dakota State, and Clemson, the only ones that have won more games than we have. I, I think it's a cultural thing. I think our kids understand that, you know, when you're in our culture, it's about you know, certain expectations, um, you know, there's accountability. Um, when things aren't going our way, we believe that we can, you know, get the, the ship righted. Uh, you know, we had a great game with Northwestern State where we had to drive the ball, the last, uh, you know, drive of the game to, to win the game, and we did that. I don't think that happens uh, without having that kind of culture that we've developed the last four years. So, um, again, we lose some great players, but I think we have a great nucleus back. I think, you know, going deep into the playoffs the last four years, the kids are hungry for that opportunity to win a national championship. Um, but the reality is, is that North Dakota State and James Madison have just totally outclassed us when we've gotten to that level. And we think when we get to that level the next time, being more physical has to be the difference in our football game. And we've worked hard at being more physical. Yeah, you know, I've talked to over the years and each year you've been there, you've talked about the depth you guys have at so many positions. You're playing guys that are younger, getting that experience. And, we're seeing names now. It seems like we've been talking about for three or four years in the program. How has that helped you as you've built your depth at some key positions on your team? Yeah, I think um, you know one of the things we've done best is um, try to play a lot of guys. You know, we'll play eight offensive linemen. You know, four or five receivers, three running backs. I think this year you'll probably see us play two quarterbacks on a fairly regular you know amount of time. Um, not alternating, but you're going to see a guy go in there for packages because I think we have three quarterbacks that can play. You know, defensively, same thing. We rotate a lot of defensive linemen, a lot of linebackers, a lot of guys in the secondary. So, you know, there's a conscious effort with how we play uh, to make sure we play a lot of players. And then you have an injury or guys graduate, you have a lot of depth coming back. And you'll see we have a lot of guys who have played a lot of football uh, coming back on this football team. If you have a question for Coach Keeler, raise your hand and uh, we will get a microphone to you and just state your name and affiliation, if you don't mind, as you uh, ask your question. We'll start here in the front. Uh, Jordan Smith with the Houstonian. Uh, kind of looking, obviously, y'all were named the preseason favorite in the, in the conference. Uh, kind of looking at that, how much more added pressure 
does that put on y'all to take care of those first few conference games against uh, Nichols and Central Arkansas and Stephen F? You know, it's kind of interesting. When, when you look at our player manual um, and you open up to that schedule, we don't even have any teams on our schedule. We, we leave that, we're leaving that page blank because um, it's really more about us just trying to become the best football team we can become. But when you do take a step back and you look at the schedule, you do realize, boy, it's front loaded. There's some really heavy hitters early on. And uh, obviously, we need to get some of those new guys and some of those young guys at quarterback position kind of up to speed pretty quickly because, you know, um, again, it's front loaded and they're, they're some of the best teams in the league right away. Um, and uh, I think it's going to be a great challenge to go to Nichols uh, early in the season and have to play them at their place, a place that they had 10,000 fans come out for their playoff game uh, against South Dakota. And uh, it's a place that Coach, coach has gotten that place uh, energized. And uh, not only are they talented, but they also have a lot of confidence. Uh, but uh, there's going to be some great games early in the season for us, no question. Go ahead. Tyler Josephson with the Houstonian. You talk about all those great players that you've lost. And I, I know to you, preseason rankings are, you know, they're just numbers and you guys don't get caught up in all that. But what does it mean to you to still be at the top of that preseason column even, you know, with that? What does that say about the rest of this program? Yeah, you know, and, and I think what you'll see is this, this conference has gotten so much better since I've been here, especially from the bottom up. I mean, I just was so impressed last year with Abilene Christian, uh, how they played us to the very end, how well coached they are. Um, how well their players were taught, uh, how they were, they schemed. And, and I see it, you know, there's a lot of good young coaches that have come into this conference. There's a lot of change right now in this conference. Um, so possibly we were voted, you know, preseason number one because we do have a lot of guys coming back. And, you know, I've, I'm come, becoming one of the old guys in this conference now. Um, so it pays a little bit more stability w with, with Sam Houston right now. But at the same time, like I said, since the day I got here, I've seen this conference get better and better, and especially from the bottom up. There was a time when you could look at your schedule and say, here's three or four that we feel pretty good. You don't have those games anymore. Every game now is a game where uh, you feel like, you know what, you, you need to have a great week of preparation because if you don't, you know, we're the hunted. I mean, we're the, the number one team. We're the team the last four years have won the most games. Uh, people are going to be, you know, giving us their best football game. And Northwestern Street is such a great example. Uh, those guys coming and playing a terrific football game with us and, and us having to drive the ball that last series to win the ball game. Let's go here, Shea Walker. Shea Walker, Southland Conference Television Network. Coach, you talked about the uh, new offensive coordinator, but you guys have always had this method of playing fast. And over 1,000 offensive plays last year. With the new discipline, not a big change, but with the new discipline, how do you see that affecting the pace of your offense? Yeah, you know, Ryan Carty uh, played for me at Delaware, was actually Joe Flacco's backup, uh, had been at New Hampshire for a number of years. The thing I loved about Ryan, tremendously bright individual, was in a league where those defenses were always better than the talent he had on offense. Uh, so he's used to going up against people that have better people than, than he does. Um, is uh, a disciple of Chip Kelly's. Um, you know, he was with Chip at New Hampshire. So playing fast is not unusual for him. I think possibly having the, the go-ahead from me a little bit more than he did it with Sean McDonald. I think, you know, the last couple of years, their defense was better than their offense at New Hampshire, so they wanted to kind of keep a little bit more at pace. But, you know, he had that experience with Chip and, and playing for, for me at Delaware. Um, I think we'll play not quite as fast, but still play fast. But the thing we won't do, we're not going to give up scheme for speed. Uh, and that's one of the things that he and I have talked about. Still play fast, but I think you'll see us a little bit more intricate with some of our schemes than we've, we've been in the past. Question up front, Ben. Uh, ben Riker, GoBearCats.com. Uh, Coach, you know, one of the things that we're going to have to address this year, uh, the quarterback position, you mentioned that you have three. Talk about what the, each of those quarterbacks bring and where that battle stands right now. Yeah, Mike Dare uh, was a Rutgers uh, bounce back was the 18th ranked drop back quarterback in the country, six foot six, really athletic, strong arm, had a great spring, great spring game. I, I think his experience um, is, is something that gives him um, a unique advantage uh, over the other two. Um, you know, Ty Brock was the number one high school quarterback in the country coming out for our level. Only thing Ty hasn't had is experience. You know, broke his leg his junior year and his senior year. Uh, six foot four, tremendously athletic. Um, thought he had a great spring. Again, only thing he's missing right now is that a game, a game experience. 
um, and then um, uh, you know we go to, we went to the Woodlands and got Eric Schmid, a young man who had 48 touchdowns and four interceptions his senior year. And here's a guy that when we timed him at our football camp, he ran a 4.4, and we took him as an athlete. And there's no question that we might have to have some packages in the game for a guy like Eric Schmidt because he creates a lot of problems, getting on the edge, pulling the ball down, uh, some of the run game you can use. So we're excited. You know, I mean, I, they say sometimes when you have more than one, you don't have any. I really do think we have more than one. I think we have three that can, we can win with. And like I said, Mike Dare, that experience of playing in the junior college, getting a full season in, uh, those game reps, I think Roy gives him a uh, unique advantage early on. I think as the season wears on, I think it's going to be a great competition, and uh, competition always makes everyone better. Question in the back left side. Richard Dean, Houston Chronicle. Coach, uh, as far as the transfers, is there one or two players that you expect in really you're, you're going to have to count on for immediate play that you really think they're, have the biggest impact on the team? Uh, I, I don't think um, there, there's a, like, a, uh, like Mike Dare probably is the one that you think about because it's the quarterback position and the fact that we're, we're sort of raw and, and we're sort of green at that quarterback spot. Even though we love the two young guys we have, he's probably the guy that you think probably defensively um, we, we have a couple defensive tackles. We went to California, got some JC kids that, you know, we thought we needed to match up with the, the more physical teams in our, our league and also in, in, in the country. Um, when you think about, you know, Nichols, Nichols wants to run the football at you. You know, they want to get a big offensive line. Same thing with McNeese. Um, and so we felt, you know, going and getting some of those guys were going to be uh, helpful to kind of go you know, match up. And then, when we've gotten up against James Madison and North Dakota State, it's been very obvious. We haven't been physical enough up front. So consciously, we went out and got a couple of defensive tackles, uh, some big guys inside. Um, and um, I say the quarterback position, uh, I mean, Mike Dare might be as polished a quarterback as I've recruited, and I've recruited some pretty good ones. I think he has all the upside in the world, and it's really kind of interesting. He's going to find himself in kind of a dogfight because these two young guys who are both going to be redshirt freshmen uh, next year are pretty talented. Question up front. Uh, Jordan Smith, talking about um, obviously the different um, locations that you're going to be for uh, the conference last year. You had five home games for conference games. Now you only have three. Uh, kind of looking at that, how important do those road games become uh, since you're going to be away from Huntsville for so long? Yeah, and you know, uh, just the way our conference works, um, this is a year that we have um, four in four, four conference games at home, but one of those conference games is the Piney Woods. So now all of a sudden you only have three at your, your, your place. And every other year that happens to us. Uh, so then you're forced to pay for two games that come in because obviously with a program like Sam Houston, we don't want to have four home games. We want to have at least five. Um, and, and there's some challenges. Uh, you know, like I said, early on, you know, playing uh, Nichols on the road is going to be a great challenge. Um, we didn't play well the last time we went to Incarnate Word. Um, and I know they've improved dramatically. I know they're putting more resources into it. I know there's a lot of energy there. They're talking about facilities. They're talking about, uh, you know, some different funding for, for, for the program. So uh, I think our players have been through, the, our veteran players have been through this league now a couple times. They've seen the growth uh, uh, in this conference in terms of the teams that you would think were sort of the bottom of the league. Those teams now are getting much better. And uh, there's a lot more parity in this league. So, you know, that's why we have on, on, uh, in the player manual, you know, no real schedule on there because, guys, it's worried about, it's, it's worried about taking care of our culture. It's worried about taking care of all the things you need to do to win uh, ball games. But let's not worry about any particular ball game uh, right now. Let's worry about how we do things more than actually winning the game. Let's talk about how we're going to win the game. Another question before we toss over to Lincoln. Uh, Jason Barfield, of course. Jason Barfield, Bearcat Sports Network. Coach, uh, when you look at your coaching staff and the new guys that you've brought in, uh, how long does it take them to get up to speed just in terms of what to expect once you get into, like, conference play and, and kind of what they're going to be looking at? Yeah, you know, the, the good news is we've won a lot of ball games. The bad news is that when you win a lot of ball games, they steal your coaches. And so, you know, we went through a little transition this year, third offensive coordinator in th three years, uh, new offensive line coach. Uh, lost my defensive line coach to East Carolina, 
Uh, so, you know, some guys have been, have the, you know, new guys brought in, some moving around. I really like the staff, and the kids have really bought into the staff. Um, there's been some mandates from me. You know, when we lost to North Dakota State, my, my strength coach loves to tell the story that I had him in the corner at 1.30 in the morning before we hopped on the plane after we went through uh, the check-in, and I'm talking about how we're going to change the strength program. And that's sort of the mentality is, like, we've been – a consensus number three team in the country the last four years in a row. You know, if you look at the last four years totally, we're the number three team. We, we, we're trying to find a way to get over that hump. And one of those ways to get over that hump, we think, is to be more physical. So the coaches I hired uh, all have been brought in with a mentality of, okay, you know, we need to get this team to be a more physical football team. The great thing about being here in the great state of Texas is we're going to get some great athletes. Along with that, we need to find a way to incorporate more of a physical brand of football, and that's kind of what our hope is, that this new, these new guys I've added on the coaching staff can help bring along that mentality of that we're going to be a more physical football team. All right, I'll catch up. Uh, spend a couple more minutes with Coach Keeler here in just a moment. Right now, we're going to toss it over uh, to his left, the interview table there. Let's check in once again with Lincoln Rose, standing by with a couple of student athletes from Sam Houston State. Lincoln? Yeah, speaking about student athletes from the great state of Texas, uh, Mitchell Watanabe, the offensive lineman, now senior out of the Alamo City, and of course, Adrian Contreras, the senior defensive back, grew up just north of Austin, up in Georgetown. Uh, let's start off Sam Houston State. We talk about the offense. Uh, we'll get to the defense soon enough, but the offense, Jeremiah Briscoe, your back-to-back -back national player of the year, your Walter Payton uh, award recipient out the door, and, and now you have three, as Coach mentions, very capable quarterbacks, but each bring their own skill set. For an offensive lineman, what are the differences for you, depending on who's back there? Uh, the biggest thing for us as offensive line, as the offensive unit, is, between Jeremiah and the three quarters we have now, is mobility. And the way our offense has changed, the way we can attack the attacking position of the quarterback, like people are going to have to scheme for that just because of their mobility and just brings bigger uh, pressure on defenses overall. Adrian, on that defensive side, uh, you know your offense is going to put up some points. How does that change the mindset back there? You may let one possession slip away, but you know you're going to be in a ball game uh, all four quarters. Uh, well, that's never. Um, the way we want to play is to be depending on the offense. We want to do our part. We want to play our one-third of the game. There's offense, defense, and special teams. So we want to be successful on our third. Um, so we want, if the offense is having trouble on a drive or something like that, um, the defense should be able to go out there and make a stand. Coach talks about getting over the hump. Of course, he already has a national championship on his resume. As a guy who has constantly gotten to the national semifinals playing in those ball games, uh, he talked about physicality. What, in your mind, has been the difference between you and those top two teams? Yeah, so like you said, I mean, I've played three seasons so far, and we've been just a few wins away from being national, champions, uh, national champions. Um, and for me, I feel like the difference is just being brilliant in the, in the basics, and that's something that we talk about, uh, just being fundamentally sound, knowing our job and doing our job um, so that we can be the best in the country. Mitchell, I don't think anybody would, will label Jeremiah as just a, a system guy, but it does seem like everywhere on this offense, talented guys leave, and yet the results are the same the next year in the win-loss calm, more deep runs. Uh, what is the, this year? You're without Jeremiah, without Corey, without Yedidiah. You do happen to have the Offensive Player of the Year coming back this year. We've gone this long without talking about Davion Davis. Uh, but what is it about this program, this system under Coach Keeler, that the confidence is there and at the end of the year the results are there? Uh, I think the biggest thing is probably depth. You build depth and then young guys learn. And as you see, Yedidiah leaves, but we still have two All-American wide receivers coming back. And um, Offense line, seven returners on the offense side and four of them on the offense line. You're just building depth as the years go by. And you learn from the dudes in front of you, great players as Jeremiah Briscoe. You have three quarterbacks, well, two that learn behind them. And so it just helps us um, grow more as a program, not just for this season, but for the seasons to come. How important is that? It, you know, it's hard to leave a legacy as the first to do something at Sam Houston State. There's been so much success here, but what do you hope to be able to leave as your legacy? Uh, the only thing missing on my legacy, on um, the team's legacy, is just a national championship. And just to get over that hump is why we're changing our philosophy, our culture, and that's what we 
got to do. You got that ring from a conference championship a couple years ago. I know you'd like to gra grab a little bit more bling as well. Uh, Adrian, for you personally on the defensive side, where is there still room in the next month for you to continue to make strides for the regular season? And where throughout the season do you think we'll see the biggest improvement for, from you? Um, just like I said, just being brilliant in the basics, fundamentally sound in the game of football, um, staying in the meeting rooms, watching film, learning more about the game, uh, knowing our opponent, and being able to exploit things that we learn throughout studying film. How excited are you every day in practice to line up against this offense? How, how has that made this defensive unit even better? Oh, it's hard to explain how incredible it is because in my three seasons of playing here, I've lined up against some of the best athletes that I've seen in any game. Like I, Davion Davis, for example, I don't know that I've ever gone up against in a game a receiver as good as him. Um, so like to have so much talent that we do and to be able to see that every day in practice, um, it makes us so much more prepared for games and for our opponents. Are you an Oakland Raiders fan right now? Oh, got to be. Yeah, P.J. Hall's uh, second round selection of the Raiders, of course, uh, Jeremiah Briscoe spending his camp with the Super Bowl champions up there in Philadelphia. I believe Philadelphia now has a rule that they only will take FCS quarterbacks, and they've had plenty of success with that, Randy. Yes, they have, and uh, hopefully Jeremiah Briscoe will get his shot one day as well, if not in Philly, somewhere else. A couple more minutes here with uh, Coach Keeler, and uh, before we, you know, we're here to talk about the new season, but I do want to ask, I want to just follow up, if you don't mind, they were talking about P.J. What does it mean for you you know what he brought to this program. You had the chance to coach him, to see him get that call in that second round representing Sam Houston. And if you understand P.J.'s history, P.J. was a young man when recruited as a freshman, they weren't sure if they were going to play him as an H-back or as a defensive end. Mm -hmm. And so they redshirted him for a year and decided to put him over on defense. And when we get here, my defensive line coach, Phil Petit, who had been with me every place I've ever been and is one of the best I've ever seen, said, I don't think anyone knows how special this kid could be. And we got him at 235 pounds. Over his career, he got to about 275. Going into his senior year, I said, PJ, I really think for your career and for our best interest, I think playing in the inside is the way to go. So we went up to 308 and had a phenomenal season again. And then obviously put himself in a position to be a second round draft choice. So uh, such a humble young man. Uh, just all he, all he cared about was us winning. Uh, a friend to every guy on this team. Uh, just, uh, you know, a great family kid. Uh, really exciting for him to, uh, you know, go through the process and, and come out as a second-round pick, and I think he'll have a great career. And it's, it's part of coaching. You've had so many great, great players come through the program, and you've lost a handful from last year, but still you've got so many that, that have the experience that are coming back. You've got to be able to just keep moving forward and, and have a new guy step up. And I know you've, you've enjoyed having these guys develop and ready to get that challenge. Yeah, you know, Davion Davis and Nathan Stewart might be two of the greatest players I've ever coached. Yeah. And no one even talks about those guys because of the guys we've had before. Um, and so, again, I think we've done a really good job of recruiting good young players, uh, try to, you know, play a lot of guys, create some depth. Um, Adrian kind of alluded to it's a great challenge, you know, when, when the offense and defense go up against each other. Uh, they, they really get after it and try to make each other better. Yeah. And again, you know, we talk a lot about culture. And, you know, we have a great culture. We want a greater culture. We have great leadership. We want greater leadership. And that's been kind of the theme that we've had since we lost that game to North Dakota State is to, for us to move it to another level, we can't stay stagnant. We can't stay where we're at. And if it means we're going to tweak some things offensively and defensively on special teams, we know we need to do those things, and we're going to do those things. But also just every one of us in taking more accountability and trying to move this to another level. So I'm excited with the nucleus of players we have coming back. I think we have some great leaders. Uh, I know the upperclassmen in our leadership council meetings have just raved about the freshman class in terms of not only their ability, but also the kind of young men we brought into the program. And so it's exciting. You know, this is my, we talked earlier, this is my 25th season as a head coach. I get goosebumps every single year. I mean, because right now, like, just your imagination can go wild. And, you know, I really think I have a really good team coming back. Uh, I'm excited to get these guys in training camp. And I'm excited to kind of go on this journey with them to see how good we can be. All right, lastly, let's hit the schedule real quick before we wrap it up. Uh, take a look at that. What do you think of the schedule uh, as you kick it off here? And, of course, then eventually getting the meat of, uh, of conference play as well. Yeah, Prairie View gave us everything that we could possibly imagine last year. Uh, again, we're used to being the hunted, uh, and so those guys will be excited. Uh, they have some new things going on offensively and defensively there. So, you, you know, walking in, you're not sure what you're going to get. Uh, they've had a coaching change. 
Um, North Dakota was a playoff team two years ago, or a playoff caliber team two years ago. And then last year, with almost the same team coming back, really had a poor season. So you're not sure what you're going to get from them, but they're a team that, you know, I think ability-wise will give us uh, everything we can handle. And then you go down to Nichols, and, and you play down there, and uh, it's a tough place to play. It's a tough trip. Um, like I said, I'm just so excited for what they got going in terms of having 10,000 fans at that, at that playoff game. I'm sure they're going to have a great crowd uh, uh, for us. Uh, excited to get some gumbo. Um, had some great gumbo last time we played down there. But, you know, so, and you just look at the, 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 the schedule, you know, there's really, there, there's no bottom teams anymore. I mean, you're just, every year there's going to be a fight now because I think the teams that were at one time at the bottom are starting to move up in, in position to be successful. When I was at Delaware, I think the year we won the national championship, we were picked in the lower part of the league. Uh, the year Villanova won the national championship, the same thing. They were picked in the middle to the lower part of the league. I think this league is becoming the same way. I think it's becoming a league that year in and year out, it's going to be a tough to figure out who's going to be the eventual conference champion because there's becoming a lot more parity than there ever was four years ago.